Number 15, letter A. What minimum coefficient of friction is needed between the legs and the ground to keep the sign in figure 9.34 in the position shown if the chain breaks? All right, so here's my picture. All right, there's a certain hinge and there's a chain. All right, we just did this problem in, I mean, not this exact problem, but a very similar problem in number 14. So now the chain breaks. So I'm gonna base my discussion off of uh, number 14 as well. So the chain breaks. So what's gonna happen? Well, if the chain breaks, and this is a hinge, right? And I'm assuming that this is able to freely rotate around the hinge, what's gonna eventually happen to the sign? Well, it's gonna collapse, right? This essentially side will, both of them, right, will slip on out if there's no friction here between uh, the leg of the sign and the ground, and this whole thing will just fall downward, right? Kind of doing like a split. The sign's basically doing a split. So now knowing that that's the case, you have to think now, if the sign is going to want to slide this way, what's going to keep it in equilibrium? Well, it's gonna be the opposite force to the vector I just drew. It's going to be a force that is pointing inward to prevent the leg from slipping outward, right? Okay, now most importantly, remember I'm concerned about forces acting on the sign, Okay, and therefore I'm considering this force of the ground that's being produced by the ground and acting on the sign. Essentially, it's through the friction, okay? Now, uh, what we need to do is detail then, so this is basically my frictional force, okay? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just simplify the picture down here a little bit now. I'm gonna look at half of it again, okay? Because there's symmetry in the problem. So. What are some of the things we know? Well, we know the total height here is 1.3 meters. We also know that since this, this is half of the sign and the total distance between the two legs was 1.1, we know that this distance over here will be half of that. Okay, what are the forces that are acting on the sign? Well, one will be the weight here, right? And that weight will be pointing straight down. Okay, what will that weight be? Well, remember from the problem prior, they told us that the mass of the whole sign was equal to eight kilograms. Okay, so therefore that particular weight, since it's half now of the sign, it's gonna be eight over four, multiplied them by gravity, so that we get the weight, okay? And I think if I remember it, it's 39.2. And let me just double check. So eight over, what did I, why did I write a four there? It's eight over two, guys, I apologize. This is eight over, eight over two. Okay, times 9.8. So 8 over 2 times 9.8. Yeah, 39.2, and that's in terms of Newton. So that's going to be the weight. Okay, that's equal to the weight. So I'll just label that W. Okay, what's the other force? Well, there's two now. The one of the force, one force acting on the leg is going to be pointing up. Now I drew that a little larger, but it should be in the, of the same magnitude as the weight. That's the normal force. We've detailed that in the picture prior, so I'll call that Fn. All right, and then there is a now horizontal force of friction pointing towards the right. Okay, that's the new force. I'll call that F sub F. All right, um, so now, again, taking the hinge to be the axis of rotation, I'm going to look at this problem in terms of the torques. All right, because I realize that this component has to be balanced with some other horizontal component, but... I don't know what that is either, so I can't look at it as the sum of the forces. I have to look at it as the sum of the torques, just like we did in the prior problem. So now, sum of the torques in this problem will equal zero. What are the torques? Well, there's three forces, therefore there are three torques. Okay, the weight, the normal force, and the force of friction. So let me call this, you know, the I'll call it the torque produced by the weight, plus the torque produced by the normal force, plus the torque produced by the uh, frictional force, I'll just denote it with little f, should equal zero. Before we move on, always check the signs of the torques. This weight would produce a uh, torque, well, would produce a rotation that would rotate this counterclockwise, and therefore the torque due to the weight is positive. The normal force, if that force is applied, it would rotate around that axis, the bar or the sign clockwise, and therefore this will be negative. Let's change that sign right now. And then the force due to, uh, the excuse me, the torque due to the frictional force, if this were applied, it would rotate the sign counterclockwise and therefore it's positive. So we're good. 
So again, we're trying to find the force of friction. We know that this particular force of friction will be contained within that torque. So let's just solve this thing for the torque due to the frictional force. So that's going to equal now the torque of the normal force minus the torque due to the weight. Okay, let's expand on this now. Remember, we know this other formula that I could add to the right-hand side, that the torque is equal to the perpendicular lever arm multiplied by the force. This is going to be the formula I'm going to use. All the R's I'm going to plug in here will be perpendicular values because I'm going to look at this problem in a geometric perspective. All right, so let's expand. So this will be the... Uh, lever arm, the perpendicular lever arm due to the frictional force multiplied by that frictional force. Okay, that shall now be equal to the uh, perpendicular lever arm of the normal force multiplied by the normal force itself, minus then the perpendicular lever arm due to the weight multiplied by the force due to the weight, or just the, I'll just call it W, okay, due to the weight. Now, they wanted me to find the minimum coefficient of friction, right? So now you have to think about, well, well, first, let's just solve this for the force of friction, because we know we have to get the coefficient of kinetic, fric uh, excuse me, the coefficient of static friction through the frictional force. So let's just solve this for F sub F. So this would be Rn Fn minus Rw times the weight, all divided by now, all divided by the um, perpendicular lever arm due to the force of friction. Now... Let's come up with another formula for the force of friction. Since I don't have the coefficient of kinetic friction in here, I need to think of another formula, right? That involves kinetic friction, and I have to plug it in basically for the force of friction because I know that they are related. So we know that the force of friction, right, is, is you know, specifically static friction, the maximum force should occur when the coefficient of static friction is then multiplied by the normal force, right? So what I can do is I can take this value and substitute it on in for the frictional force. Now, when we do that, right, we could then simply, you know, what you're gonna write coefficient or uh, coefficient of static friction times the normal force, and then you're gonna divide out the normal force from both sides. So just thinking about that ahead of time, I'm gonna do all the math just all in one step. When I substitute th to that and then reorganize it, it should work out to be this, the coefficient of static friction should equal Rn Fn minus Rw times the weight, all divided by now, Rf times the normal force. Now you can simplify this if you wanted. You could cancel them and right, put basically both these terms over this denominator. I'm not going to worry about that. I'm just going to start plugging stuff in. So here's the formula. So let's solve. Okay, coefficient of static friction. That has to be equal to now the perpendicular lever arm due to the... Uh, due to the um, uh, normal force. So I detailed this, by the way, in the, in the last problem. It's going to be the same exact technique, so please reference number 14 for a discussion. I'm just going to try to save a little time here. So basically what we would do is in terms of, in terms of my picture over here, I would create a little rectangle here. Notice that I know, you know the perpendicular to the line of action is going to be this line over here. And I know that value, since I created a rectangle, I know that those two sides are equivalent. So I know that that uh, perpendicular lever arm is going to be 110 over 2. All right. So I know that was quick, but please, I did a detailed discussion in number 14. So please reference that video. Um, then times the normal force value. Now remember, the normal force is going to be equal, but opposite in the direction of the weight. Now I'm not concerned about the signs of the forces here because I'm talking about torque. So I took already the signs into account. So just plug in all the absolute values. So this is now going to be 39.2 minus then the perpendicular lever arm due to the weight. Again, I could draw a little uh, box up here now. The perpendicular distance will be uh, this value. I know this value because it's half. this is halfway down the sign, so it's basically half of this, which would be 110 over 4. Again, describe that fully in the prior video. So 110 over 4. Multiply then by the weight, and we already found the weight up here, right? 39.2. So that's 39.2. And that's now all divided by the uh, perpendicular lever arm for the uh, frictional force. Now that I didn't do in the prior video, so I'm just going to do that quickly uh, down here, and then I'm going to erase it. So here's my triangle. OK, 
Okay, axis of rotation is up at the top, and the frictional force is the force acting on the leg pointing this direction. I'm exaggerating the size of that, okay? So this is going to be the frictional force. Now, you dot the line of action of that particular force, and then the perpendicular lever arm is the perpendicular distance between this line of action and the axis of rotation. So what would that distance look like on here? Well, it would look like this particular height. So it's exactly the same as the normal force, right? Perpendicular value, okay? So this would be 1.3 meters. How did I know that? I mean, it was given in the problem. So let's erase, okay? Let's just get rid of all that. All right, so now we know that the uh, perpendicular lever arm is going to be uh, 1.3 meters. And then that's going to be multiplied then by the uh, normal force, right? Okay. And when I said the same, I didn't mean the same value because obviously, hold on one second. Obviously, this is the value of the perpendicular distance because the normal force was this perpendicular distance, lo noticing over here in the picture. So I didn't mean that as the same. I just meant they're acting at the same point. They're, the lever arms are not the same. All right. So I make a quick correction there. Uh, then multiply by the value of the normal force, and we already found that to be 39.2. So guess what? Voila, just calculate. So we got 1.1 over 2 times 39.2 minus 1.1 over 4 times 39.2. And that's now all divided by parentheses 1.3 times 39.2. And the coefficient works out to be about 0.212. And how many sig figs? Oh, I'll do three sig figs. So that's the coefficient of static friction. There it is. Beautiful, right? So now then it says letter B, what force is exerted by each side of the hinge? So now um, we need to now find the, I'm just thinking about where I'm gonna place this. So I'm gonna do the work over here, right? Actually, you know what? I'm gonna erase this work on the top. Let's just, do, let's see if I can fit it up here. All right, so now, again, looking at the picture, let me just draw a simple sketch. Okay, I want to find the force at the hinge, right? So that's this up here. Let's just detail the force again. I have a weight, right? It's pointing straight down, W. I have a normal force, I'm just gonna put it in the same color, but I'll try to keep it the same size here, pointing straight up, right? That's the normal force. Let's stop right there. What do we know about these forces in the y direction? They cancel, right? They're, they're the same, just equal and opposite in direction. So now you're taking, since we're thinking about the sum of the forces, we're taking those signs into account. Now, what are the remaining forces? Well, we said that there's a force due to friction here at the bottom, right? And this force, because the system we, we assume is gonna be in equilibrium because the frictional force will be providing the force necessary to keep it steady, will be balanced then by a force up here at the hinge. So the hinge will be opposing that, pointing in the exact opposite direction. I'll call that the force of the hinge. Now, stating that the sum of the force in the x direction should equal zero, I have two forces in that x direction, correct? I have the force of friction and then the force due to the hinge. And so simply, the force of the hinge should be equal but opposite in direction of the, equal in magnitude but opposite in direction of the frictional force, right? So there it is. Now don't worry about the sign because they're asking for exerted by each side of the hinge. I'm only finding one of the sides, all right? So since they want it for, you know, both essentially, it's gonna be just, we're just gonna give the magnitude. They're not asking for the direction. So I'm just gonna get rid of this negative sign, all right? So basically the force of the hinge will be equal to the force due to friction. Now what is the force due to friction? Well, we had a nice beautiful formula down here, right? The force due to friction, I can now substitute in the coefficient of static friction, multiply them by the normal force. And voila, there we go. All we have to now do is just plug in the values. So the force of the hinge will be equal to the coefficient, which was, we just found to be 0.212, right? Then multiplied by the normal force. And the normal force we found before was 39.2. Easy enough. So here we go, the force at the hinge, this is one of the sides, but this is gonna be the same on both. Just take your answer prior and multiply that by 39.2 and 8.29. All right, so the value here is gonna be 8.29 and that is in terms of uh, Newtons. And this was all for letter B. 
All right, guys, thank you so very much for tuning in. I really do hope this helped. And if it did, hit that like button, subscribe. That would be awesome. Uh, definitely help us out tremendously too. And uh, we appreciate your viewership very much. Take care.